Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Richard III. Not a lot of people know that. And today, we're here to talk about me at the Richard III Centre. And a lovely lady, called Rachel, is going to tell you all about me. My name's Rachel Ayrton. I'm Learning and Interpretation Manager for the King Richard III Visitor Centre. He was the younger brother of King, Richard, or King Edward IV, who was king before him. Um, and he was the son of Richard, Duke of York. And I think that sometimes causes a little confusion because he's often known as Richard of York because he was of the House of York. But before he was king, he was actually Duke of Gloucester. And it was his father, also called Richard, who was Duke of York. I think the really confusing thing about this period is that there were, they only seemed to be about three first names. You were either called Richard, Edward or Henry. It's very confusing. That's the question, isn't it? That's the question everybody asks. And I'm afraid I can't answer it. I can't tell you whether Richard killed his nephews or not because we just don't know. It's um, one of those enduring murder mysteries. Nobody knows the fate of the princes in the tower. Um, contemporary sources tell us that they were lodged in the tower um, before the young um, Edward's coronation was due to happen. And that was perfectly normal. The tower wasn't really considered a prison at the time. It was a palace. So that was where traditionally kings went before their coronation. Well, we know he didn't have a limp because contemporary reports state that he was um, an able warrior and he fought bravely. And there's plenty of reports, both from the Tudors and from people on his side, who say that you know he was physically fit and able. Um, and we now know, now that the skeleton has been found, that he didn't have a hunch, there was no hump back, but he did have a spinal deformity, and it's called scoliosis. So there's no kind of hunch, as Shakespeare likes to portray Richard, but more of a curve, which really, wearing clothes, you wouldn't have been able to see the difference, and it certainly didn't stop him being physically able. Many people thought I was a hunchback. Not at all. I'm straight as an arrow. Right, this is Leicester Cathedral, where I am buried. 400 years ago, I was dragged from Bosworth, naked, on the back of an horse, all the way to the car park, just behind those buildings there, where I was left, and I still haven't paid the parking fine. Bear with us, we're going in there to see where I am finally laid to rest. having buried in the Greyfriars, it was quite a canny one because it wasn't a public church so it was it was the church of the friary so the public couldn't come in and see Richard's grave so it couldn't become a meeting point for any uh, remaining Yorkist supporters so he was buried in a, in a respectful way but in quite a private location well the university are 99.99 percent sure that's kind of pretty much the official figure um, and there are a number of different um, tests and a number of different strands of evidence which lead us to, to be that sure. Obviously the DNA is a big part of that, um, so the university or that two, uh, two collateral descendants of Richard had already been identified. The results are in and you are King Richard III. Here's a piece of paper. I told you, I told you, it's me. But as well as that, there's the carbon dating of the skeleton, which places it in the right period. So this, uh, the skeleton died at the right time. Um, there's also the evidence on the skeleton itself that someone who had died in battle uh, at the age of about, you know, early 30s, which all fits in with what we know of Richard. And I think it's been a great thing for Leicester. Um, we all saw the crowds thronging the streets of Leicester um, in March last year during re internment but it wasn't just that week in March. Um, Richard III really helped put Leicester on the map. I was on. And they've even named a pub after me, Richard III. And that concludes our documentary on Richard III. Thank you very much, Agent.